Roll, please. Here on the set of the latest Resident Evil film, they're carefully setting the 3D level of each shot. Right now I'm in communication with our stereographer mm -hmm. in Tennessee, and we're just setting the depth of the 3D, so we're deciding how far apart the eyes are going to be. Right. All this state-of-the-art technology is supposed to translate into big box office. One of Canada's most successful producers is worried too many shoddy 3D films are turning off audiences. That's the real danger, is you're going to kill the golden goose. Talk to the crew and you hear a common complaint. 3D movies are too dark in theaters. An ongoing problem we have is in the actual exhibition. There's no set standard across the country, even within uh, theater chains that are, are nationwide, about the brightness levels. At Cineplex, they say they've never received a single complaint about the darkness, and the problem is with the films. What my only concern is if there are too many of them that are mediocre, then you basically impact the value of the uh, proposition. We put the question to teenagers in this first year film class. How many people believe that paying extra for a 3D ticket is worth it? Those people who believe it is not worth it. Many give 3D the thumbs down. One thing that I've noticed in basically every 3D movie is that like, the picture is a lot darker. Um, I don't really like wearing the glasses. It makes me dizzy just seeing everything. If you're going to a 3D movie and you wear glasses, then you have to do this. And that's just ridiculous. <laughs> You'll see the images are reflected. While the industry can't fix everything, this psychologist is part of a new research group dedicated to improving the 3D experience. That's really bad ghosting. There's definitely a good basis for some of the complaints. Um, some of the common complaints are things like um, eye fatigue um, and nausea. Part of the problem comes from how 3D forces our eyes to work. Normally we adjust naturally depending on where we're looking. So as I bring the stick towards my eyes, you can see that my eyes converge and as I move it away, my eyes diverge. But a series of quick cuts force our eyes to try and keep up. Not only that, about 8% of people have stereo blindness and can't see 3D at all. So they're basically wasting their money. What they're going to do is, is just see the 2D version. Where you sit also makes a difference. If you're off to the sides, if you're at too much of an angle, you're going to get some introduction of crosstalk, you're going to get some distortion. Ellis says most, but not all, seats offer an excellent 3D experience. With the new glasses, uh, I've pretty much sat uh, anywhere and everywhere. I'm not saying about the first row of the auditorium, but uh, within uh, you know reasonable areas of the theater, there's no real distortion. At the same time, he says the 3D art form is still evolving. I feel that what we need to make sure is that we give the uh, guests the best experience possible, have less 3D movies, but better quality 3D movies. And with 40 3D films planned for the next year alone, Hollywood's 3D love affair shows no signs of fading. Eli Glasner, CBC News, Toronto.